positive chaos. Now, before we can define this, we first must explain what negative chaos is. So what I'm gonna do with you guys here is I'm gonna give you three examples. And I want you to interact and engage with me as I go through these forms of negative chaos. The first one. Right up here you'll see 2001 UVM. For those of you that don't know, there we go. For those of you that don't know, UVM stands for the University of Vermont. And in 2004, I graduated with a mechanical engineering degree and I was on top of the world. However, there was a Tuesday in my junior year in 2001 that defines negative chaos. Now we all know that college is the best time in our life for all of us that has attended, for those that haven't, get ready for it because it is the best time of your life. It was a Tuesday and I was walking across campus with my good friend, housemate, and fellow mechanical engineering major, Adam Mahoney. We were talking about what shenanigans we were gonna get into that afternoon. It was an epic day, bluebird, Indian summer fall. You could smell the grass that was just cut. We were on our way to Aiken building, because I remember this, because it was the only class I had outside of Vody Hall, which is the engineering building on the UVM campus. We were on our way to EE100, which started at 8.55 a.m. When we got to class, we sat on the left side of the room, second row, and we were staring out the windows and just checking out the great day. What was weird is the professor that we had was not only the best professor, because he was young and understood us college kids, but he was never late. And for some reason, at 8.55, when he, when he didn't arrive, Something was up, 8.56, 8.57, and then at 8.58 a.m. when he walked into the room, he did not drop some amazing electrical circuit on us, but what he told us was that a plane had just flown into the side of the World Trade Center. That right there is negative chaos. I remember that day exactly how I just explained it to you. So I want you all right now to close your eyes. I want you to figure out where you were, what you were doing, that smell, do we all have it? You can remember that because that is a moment of negative chaos that has been burned into your memories. So I've given you one example. Let's do another. Pepperoni pizza. I'm not a vegetarian. I know that's what you're all thinking. But pepperoni pizza defines an exact moment of negative chaos in my life. I was 10 years old. My parents had just picked me up on a Thursday night. And instead of going home for dinner, we went to Lee Zachary's Pizza. It's located in Waterbury, Vermont, small building, white walls, Grave floor, soda machine right up front where you could make graveyards, my favorite. We sat in the back, table of four with my parents, even though we were just three. My dad to my left, my mom in front, and as I sat down, I took my Oakland A's hat off my head and put it on the table, because my mom had always taught me, don't ever eat with your hat on. I was a huge A's fan at the time. The Bash Brothers, McGuire and Canseco, I mean, come on, the coolest guys in baseball. So I was listening to the radio that night and hoping to hear a sports update that they had just hit a home run. But my pizza showed up, and when it did, there was no sports alert, but a news alert, that we had just gone to war and started the Desert Storm conflict. My father, a guardsman at the time, looked intently and listened to the words of the radio, and I looked at him and saw for the first time that my father not only wanted to protect me, but that he wanted to protect our country. And that right there is what I believe is another form of negative chaos. The next one I'm gonna talk about we're gonna start off positive, and then we'll, we'll share the example of negative here. Now, as you can tell, I'm walking funny up here. I even walked funny as I came on. In 2006, I suffered a life-altering injury in a ski accident. I overshot a jump, and that day helped me create what's behind me, the Hi Fives Foundation, a nonprofit 501c3 located in Lake Tahoe that has a national mission to raise money and awareness for athletes that have suffered a life-altering injury while pursuing a dream in the winter sports. This foundation, we're successful because we're different. We are heavily active on the social media side of things. And so one tweet speaks out in my mind of a form of negative chaos. It was April 15th. We were five days away from our biggest fundraiser trains, a ski and snowboard sl slope style event that has started what the foundation does. We believe in the word fun instead of the whole word fundraiser. And so on this day, our office is filled with boxes, my desk is cluttered, and we have a new intern starting. And I'm wondering, how is he going to handle this? A smart-looking, preppy little kid named Luca shows up. And on that day, he is keeping up with the high-paced environment of the foundation. I'm like, this is great. And then at 11.58, a text arrived in on Luca's phone that said, there's been an explosion at the Boston Marathon finish line, and we're running. I'll call you soon. Instantly, the foundation hopped online. Couldn't find anything. 
So at 11.59 a.m., we sent out this tweet. What is happening at the Boston Marathon? No one replied. And then at 12.03, we saw on CNN exactly what had happened. This tweet right here impacts us in a negative chaos form. So I've talked about negative chaos with you guys, and I hope you have some examples in your head of as I've spoken. But let's go to where I talk about positive chaos. I'm gonna transform each and every one of your memories right now. Squaw Valley. Some of you, when you hear that, probably think 1960 Winter Olympics or the best place to ski and ride, or, well, some of you might not know at all where this place is. Well, Squaw Valley did host the 1960 Winter Olympics. It is the best place to ski and ride, and it is also the location of the iconic movie Hot Dog. But that's not the point here. The point is when I hear the word Squaw Valley, I think of a high five. This is me and my buddy Steve Wallace. We're sitting at the bottom of 116 steps inside of an FAA tunnel. This tunnel goes from the top of the Siberia lift to the top of the Palisades. Palisades are the best place in the world. This is where the best skiers and snowboarders ride. Just like myself, my good buddy Steve Wallace, he suffered a life-altering injury too in a ski accident, and he was the first athlete of the 51 athletes that we have helped at High Fives. So Steve and I, we decide that we wanna ski the Palisades. Well, how are we gonna do this? Because we're limited to the train, mostly by groomers, because we ski without riggers, and we both hate to hike. Hiking is not our friend. So Steve and I arrange on his three-year anniversary of his accident to get access into this tunnel. So we're walking up this tunnel, rats are running by our head, and we can smell what smells like the inside of my grandmother's closet. It is horrible. So we get there, and right in front of us is 116 steps. The reason I know this is because I counted everyone on the way up. And we sat down there, all black clothes for me, except for a mint goggles. My buddy Steve Wallace rocking a white helmet, a nice vest, and bright pants. And me and him looked at each other right then and there, and we gave each other a high five. We then ascended up those steps, we got to the top, and we did what no handicapped skier should do. We skied the steepest part of the mountain known as the Palisades, and it was unreal. So what I'm telling you is, transform locations in your life. Transform these into forms of positive chaos. Take that location, if it's your tree fort, a ski run, or even the South Pole, and make it that special place. All right, caller ID. Everyone's got it, don't check your phones right now, they're not supposed to be on. But what happens when we see this is, we do not answer the phone because you are afraid that you're gonna get a debt call, or you're gonna get some bad news, or maybe some crazy person got your number somehow. Well, anyways, for me, I answer these calls, and I'm gonna share with you why. I'm gonna transform your memories right now. So it was a Tuesday around five o'clock in the month of January 2012. Phone number shows up on the caller ID, 987-654-321, who knows where this number is coming from? And I said to myself instantly, let's answer, let's find out what this is. Pick it up, woo, click. Well, that was interesting. Two seconds later, same number, same thing, woo, click. And I don't know what's going on. Well, on the 10th call, I finally found out. It's my buddy Grant Corgan. He's calling me all the way from the South Pole, another high fives athlete. He was gonna be the first adaptive athlete to ski into the South Pole on the 100 year anniversary of polar exploration. And when Grant called me, I was the first person to know. First person in the world. I had a feat shared with me. Grant instilled positive chaos with me. And the next day, when he arrived, he instilled positive chaos with everyone at the South Pole. There was about 23 scientists there. But the world found out from that moment on. And this is my buddy Grant, who skied in the last 100 feet standing up. He had pushed himself in a custom seat 100 miles before this. So right now, you're probably all saying, Roy, this is super easy. I've had a cool feat shared with me. I've been to cool places like Squaw Valley. All right, here we go, ready? The most positive moment in my life was becoming paralyzed. Think about that. I want to have anybody be able to say that they can say that. Well, I can. Catching air was my favorite thing. I was an aspiring pro skier. This is April 28th, 2006. This is that Sugar Bowl. This is the last jump I ever landed on my skis. The day, the next day, traveled down to Mammoth, 9.05 a.m., didn't speed check a jump, and I overshot a 100-foot table by 130 feet came down from 30 feet in the air. And the resultant impact burst fractured my T12 vertebrae right into my spine. I was instantly paralyzed from the belly button down. From that moment, I could have taken a road of negativity, but I didn't. Mammoth Ski Patrol got me down the hill safely. When I got life-flighted to Reno, somehow 
I ended up with the top neurosurgeon in the region to do the operation on my back. The next day when I awoke, the Sugar Bowl Academy, where I was employed, had set up a fund where in the next two years, $85,000 would be donated to me so I could recover on my own. And that right there caused me to create the High Fives Foundation. In 2009, we launched. And to date, we've helped 51 athletes through the recovery process. Athletes just like me that fell in the same shoes. Guys that had goals, but had their dreams snapped in front of them. And so for me, positive chaos is in the formation of high fives. And I ask you all to check it out. We also have two great other programs that have to do with safety and education for kids. And we've also completed a 2,600 square foot facility that allows athletes to recover in a no questions asked environment. So right now, I've given to all of you where I view negative and positive chaos. Now, all of you have a memory of September 11th. Let's change that memory right now. Now, here is the concept. On September 11th, I told you that I thought of this classroom. Not anymore. Now I think of my buddy Shane right here. This is Shane in the back of the board. Shane was late to work on 9-11. He shouldn't be here, but he's here. And he's on the New Jersey shoreline. And every single day, he teaches surf lessons to adaptive athletes like myself and wounded warriors. Shane is causing positive chaos right in the water, giving that ability to surf to others. So when I think of September 11th, this is what I think about. And I challenge you right now to change your memory. Yep, that's me. Cute kid, I know. <laughs> and I got here because of my parents. Where I stand today, I'm here because of my parents. And so when I think of the desert storm conflict, I don't think of that pepperoni pizza. What I think about is the way my parents protected me and taught me how to be hardworking and successful. Just like Malcolm Galdwell says, hardworking people are successful. Well, my parents protected me to allow me to get there. So my positive chaos for desert storm is my parents. The Boston bombing. Now this one resonates with everyone. It only happened a few months ago. Now, as I explained to you, we were pre preparing for our event trains five days before the event happened on April 20th. Every single year we invite 30 of the best athletes to come and participate in this event. And when they show up, they get a special jersey to recognize themselves as not a spectator, but an athlete. These athletes compete not for winnings for them, but to donate back to their favorite charities. It's an event one of its kind. And somehow, that event on April 20th happened, and everything went great. And two days later, unbeknownst to the foundation, a jersey ended up right at the finish line. Now, that jersey right there shared positive chaos with every single person that walked by it. It literally handed out a high five to everyone that came to that finish line to mourn. Now, right now, what I want to challenge you all is to look into your thoughts, and let's change these. Let's change your thoughts from negative to positivity. By the process of replacing negative chaos in one's memory with the creation of positive chaos, transforming each individual's memories, we could start to reduce the global negative, and we could start to increase the global positive, which one could say is the definition of world peace. Thank you, guys.